Hey everyone, I'm Shah. In this video, I'll share the fastest way to install and use Python using a tool called UV. I'll discuss what UV is and why we should care about it, and then show you how to create new Python projects with it from scratch. Python is an essential tool for anyone building AI applications. However, if you're just getting started, even setting up your Python environment can be notoriously painful. And I remember when I was first learning Python, just getting it installed was something that was way more challenging than I expected. And so here's a little cartoon of me frustrated looking at my laptop, no idea what's going on. Lucky for us, however, today there is a tool that makes this process much easier. That tool is called UV. To quote their documentation, this is just an extremely fast Python package and project manager. In other words, it's a tool that allows you to manage your Python packages, manage manage your project dependencies, manage multiple projects, make your projects reproducible. There's a rich set of functionality built into UV. But the thing that first caught my attention with UV is how fast it is. To demonstrate this, here I'm gonna show a side-by-side -side of pip and UV installing the same exact project dependencies. Pip's on the left here, UV's on the right. So let's see what happens when we run this video. So in less than a second, UV is already done while Pip is still thinking. And it seems like it still has a ways to go because there's like 15 seconds left in this video. So for most of my Python career, I've been using Pip because that's just the default and I like sticking with simple defaults. But seeing it side by side with UV, it's kind of crazy. Probably the number of hours I've spent over the past few years just waiting for packages to install. So maybe I'll just show it again because it was so fast. So here's the beginning and then boom, UV's done and then PIP is doing its thing. Just comparing the installation of this specific project, UV was 50 times faster. This is one of the key selling points of UV. But of course, it's not the only one. For me, I came to UV for the speed, but I stayed for the simplicity. So here are my top reasons for switching from just using Python's defaults over the past seven years to now using UV. First, it's 10 to 100 times faster than PIP. And we just saw an example of that where it was literally 50 times faster, probably a little more than pip, but also it's much more simple. So you can get the same functionality as pip, but just using less code. And we'll see an example of that in a second. And it's also a single tool to replace a whole basket of other tools that you might have been using. For example, you may have been using poetry for managing projects and dependencies and PyENV to manage Python projects, but now you can do all of these things with just UV. Just to demonstrate the simplicity of UV here, I have various base python slash pip commands and the corresponding UV for various tasks. Generally, the syntax is very similar for basic things like running a script, python main.py becomes uv run main.py, installing a package, pip install numpy becomes uv add numpy. Similarly, pip install dash r requirements.txt becomes uv add dash r requirements.txt. So a lot of the basic stuff is the same, but where we start getting some big savings is the following. Let's say you clone a repo from GitHub or grab some code from a different computer, if you want to get that Python project set up on your laptop, you will need to do the following three commands. You'll need to create a new virtual environment using this line of code here. Then you'll need to activate that environment. And then finally, you'll need to install all the requirements for that environment, assuming there's a requirements.txt file. So the number of times I've run these three lines of code is far more than I can count. And it usually takes a lot of time. However, if you are cloning a repo that was created using UV, you can just run UV sync and instantly the project is ready to run on your machine. Another benefit of UV is when you're trying to capture the dependencies of a Python project. Let's say you've been working for days or weeks on this project and you finally get it working. You finally have all the right libraries installed on your virtual environment. You want to capture these libraries so you can share with other people and they can also run it. So you might do pip freeze to store all the libraries in a requirements.txt file. So you can run this line of code. And a lot of times this doesn't work really well because there's a lot of things that are not specified in this requirements file when you do the pip freeze. But let's say everything works out, still you gotta run this line of code. However, if you build your project using UV, the dependencies are captured automatically. There's no extra step that you have to do. Everything will get tracked for you whenever you add them to your virtual environment. Now that we have a basic understanding of what UV is and why we should consider using it, 
yet. Let's go through a hands-on demo. So here I'm going to cover three things. We're going to talk about how to install UV on your machine. Then we'll talk about how you can create your first project using UV. And then finally, we'll discuss how to add dependencies. Here we're at the UV docs, and this is their installation guide. I'll also drop this link in the description below. But to install it, it's just a one-line install. So on Mac OS and Linux, you can use curl or you can use wget if you don't have curl. If you're on Windows, you can one-line install it with PowerShell. There are also alternatives, but these are probably the simplest ways to get them installed. I already have UV installed, so I probably don't need to do this, but let me just copy it anyway. And then I'll switch to my terminal. I'll paste this link and then let's see what happens. Now UV and UVX are installed. That was the first thing we wanted to do to install UV. Now we can use it to create a new Python project. And so to do that, I'm going to first change directories into my downloads folder, and then I'm gonna make a new directory for a project. So I'll do make dir, I'll call it new project. Then I'll go into this new project. And so you see we're in this empty folder called new project. To create a new Python project using UV, we can simply run uv init so uv initialize now we can see we've initialized a new project now what we can do is we can do ls again and we'll notice that a few files have been added to our folder so we have this main.py file which we can take a look at if we look at it, we see it's just like a basic hello world Python script. It has a function called main and it's saying print hello from new project. And then if we run this script, it's gonna run this function. So that's just a basic Python function. There's also this pyproject.toml file. So if we wanna take a look at that as well, we can see that it's this human readable and machine readable file and it has things like our project name, the version of our project so we can define different versions of our project if we like. We can add a description for our project, specifying where the readme for our project is. It's telling us what version of Python is required and it's telling us all the dependencies that are required. And so since we haven't added any dependencies, this is empty for now. So we can quit out of that. And then finally, there's this readme.md file. So this is just a markdown file that allows us to describe our project in more details so that when people come across it, whether it's on GitHub or something, they can have a good idea of what the project is all about and maybe you have some simple documentation or a quick start for it. So our project is set up, but we don't have any dependencies. So if we wanna add dependencies, we can just do UV add, and then we just type in whatever Python library we wanna to add to our project. So let me add NumPy, and if we do that, it's going going to install it. And then if we do an ls again, we see that we have a new file created, this uv lock file. We'll take a look at this in a second, but first let's go back to our pyproject.toml file. Now that we've added numpy to our project, it was automatically added as a dependency to this pyproject.toml file. So now whenever we run a uv sync or anyone runs a uv sync with our code, uv is going to know that it's going to need to install a version of numpy that is great greater than or equal to 2.3.2. So that's kind of how the UV sync command that we saw earlier is working under the hood. Similarly, we have this UV lock file, which we can also take a look at. Again, it has the dependencies, but there's also all this package metadata and then a more detailed description of the dependencies. So the key difference between the pyproject.toml and the UV lock file is that the UV lock file is basically a detailed snapshot of the exact dependencies we installed on our machine. While this pyproject.toml file is a fuzzier description of the minimum requirements needed to run this project on someone else's machine. Now we're fully set up so we can start developing our Python project knowing that it's going to be easy for anyone to reproduce it if they are also using UV. Even if they're not using UV they can probably get it installed using a different package manager since this pyproject.toml file is here too. There are a few hidden files also created by UV. So I'm gonna list everything in detail that's in this directory. There are a few things here. So when we first created the project, so when we did the UV init, in addition to this main.py file, this pyprojects.toml file, and this readme file, UV also created this git file, git ignore, and .py version. Git and git ignore means that this is a git repository, so it's doing version control, so we can commit changes and track changes 
changes to our Python project. And if you're not familiar with Git or GitHub, I talked all about that in my previous video. There's also this .python version file, which just has one thing in it. So we can even take a look at it, python-version. And we see it's literally a one line text file that says what version of Python this project is using. So it's very simple. And then finally, we have this .venv folder. So this is actually a folder. So we can do ls.venv. And this is our virtual environment. So this is where all the Python libraries are being installed. And then anytime we put uv run in front of something, it's going to make sure whatever comes after is run in our Python environment. So for example, if we installed something like uv add Jupyter Lab, so this is going to install Jupyter Lab for us very quickly. And then since Jupyter Lab is not installed in my base environment, this will not work. So I'll say command not found. However, if I do UV run Jupyter Lab, this is going to spin up Jupyter Lab in my browser. So just looking at that, we can see the main script. We have our pyproject.toml, this readme. So now this whole Jupyter Lab session is running in our virtual environment. One last thing I want to show is how we can spin up a UV project created by someone else on our local machine. So in this repo, I actually have two folders and each of these was created with UV. So if we take a look inside, we see this pyproject.toml file we also see the uv lock file so when we click on the pyproject.toml we see that there are a lot of dependencies here and if we want to look at the uv lock file we can do that too and we can see that this is very long but if we wanted to spin this up on our local machine it's actually very simple with uv so we can go back and we can clone this repo so i'm going to copy this and then i'm going to come back to my terminal and just do a git clone and then paste this link once we do that, it's going to download that whole repository on my computer. And then I'll change directories into this folder. And then if we do an ls, we see we have two folders, session one and session two. So I'm going to cd into session one, do an ls again. Now we are in the folder with the pyproject.toml file and the uv lock file. However, if we take a look at the secret files in this project, we see that we are missing the virtual environment. So there's actually not a virtual environment available for this project that we just downloaded. And that's because you typically won't push virtual environments to GitHub or have them available for download because one, they're usually pretty heavy files and two, they're going to be specific to whatever machine they were installed on. So the way of doing this with just pip, you would create a new virtual environment, then you would activate that environment and then you would try to install all the requirements from this requirements.txt file or the pyproject.toml. However, with UV, this is all very simple. So I'll clear this out. All we have to do is run a UV sync. And then once we do that, it's just going to instantly create a new virtual environment and install all the dependencies for us. And then we can run this code. So we can do a UV run Jupyter lab. And this will open up Jupyter lab once again, but we are now running the code we just downloaded from GitHub. We talked about a lot. So let me just conclude with a few key takeaways. First, UV is a simple and fast way to manage your Python projects. Not only is UV much faster, to run than pip, it can often perform the same functionality as pip with a lot less code. We saw how it was just a one line install and when we installed UV, it also comes with Python. Additionally, UV replaces a lot of other command line tools that you might have heard of or have installed like Poetry and PyENV. We saw how the pyproject.toml and UV lock file help ensure reproducibility. So pyproject is what you can use when sharing it. The UV lock is gonna be specific to your machine. We saw how virtual environments were managed automatically. So whenever we added a library to our UV environment, that was automatically added to our pyproject.toml file. It was automatically added to our UV lock file, and it was automatically added to our virtual environment. Finally, we saw how the projects come out of the box with Git. So this isn't something you have to initialize yourself. It just is all working, and you can, in a couple lines of code, get your project set up and start writing code. Although we only scratched the surface of what you can do with UV, you now know everything you need to start building Python projects with it. If you have any questions or suggestions for future content, please let me know in the comments below. And as always, thank you so much for your time and thanks for watching.